Welcome to this course on rigging a first-person weapon. In the last couple courses in this series, we looked at modeling weapons and texturing weapons, so now it's time to make them move. I want to show you the result before we get started so that you can see what we're aiming for. We have a pretty simple rig here with bones for all of the different pieces that are movable. So of course we have a handle bone here that controls everything from the movement and rotation of all of the pieces. We also have a bone for the trigger and one for the magazine that you can eject and put back in. We also have a slider here to actually eject the magazine. We've got a safety little switch over here, a little rotator. And we also have a rotator over here to uh, eject some extra bullets or the empty cartridges as they're fired. Now we also have this bone up here, which does quite a lot of things. And if we move this forward, you can see that it actually transforms the gun from a battle rifle to a sniper. So this is going to be a pretty in-depth rig. Uh, it's actually not too hard to set up, but if you can rig this, then you'll be able to rig just about any weapon that you can possibly think of. Let's go ahead and just get started with our default uh, blend file, or actually the blend file that I have provided in the download section of this course, which just has the gun to start out with. So you can see that it's all one object. If we toggle X-ray here, which, by the way, I'm going to be using that a lot, uh, I realized as I practiced for this. But if you open up your preferences and turn on extra shading pie menu items under key map, then you'll get that x-ray toggle here at the bottom. And I'm going to be doing that pretty much constantly. But you can see all of the pieces are here tucked away. And we're going to go ahead and just get started rigging. So in this first video, I want to rig just two or three basic pieces to show you the process. And then after that, in the next video, I'll go ahead and rig the rest of them, or at least create the bones for the rest of them. So let's hit Shift A and add a new armature. We can hit Control and click it in the outliner here, and I'll call this Rifle Armature. Then I want to keep the scale at 111. You can see if we pop open the sidebar by pressing N, the dimensions or the scale is 111. If I move this, it's going to mess with that. Uh, but since the rifle is scale 111, it's already applied, then we want to tab into edit mode before we do any of our transformations. So once we have that, then we can grab the top of this and pull this down to better match the handle, because that's what this bone is going to become. And it would be really helpful to have some gizmos to work with, but I also really like this box selection that happens with the uh, box select tool. So I'm going to go to the gizmos here and turn on move and rotate. That way, when I go ahead and select the top here, I can use the gizmos like so. So let's move this bone into place right along this handle here. I also have snapping set to vertex here, such that when I grab a piece, I can hold control and just snap it to uh, one of those vertices of the gun. Let's go ahead and switch to the bone tab in the properties panel. That way we can also hide the end panel the sidebar, and let's call this bone root. You can also call it handle, but root is a good name for anything that all of the rest of the bones are going to be controlled by. So with that, I'm going to also look at the roll as I'm placing these bones. And if you're not aware of what that is, it rotates the bone along its you know, main axis, but it also changes where all of the different axes are pointing. So if we switch from global to normal here, then you can see that the axes jumped and the Y is pointing up, the X is pointing forward. And as I go ahead and roll this around, it looks like I have to select it again to actually have that update. That's interesting. Uh, but if I do that, it should update for you real time. Now you can see that the X is pointing off in that direction and we can you know, change uh, which direction it will, it will rotate. So this is really important because a lot of these we want to have rotate along the x-axis with this control here. So we want to make sure that that x-axis is pointing in the right direction. Now for this, we're going to be moving it all around and rotating it all around. So it's not going to be a huge deal, but we want to be aware of that roll and make sure that it's not pointing uh, slightly off for whatever reason so that we can easily uh, animate it later. So with the roll set to zero, let's hit shift D rotate this 90 degrees negative such that this is moving in the positive y direction and let's scale this down and place it right by the trigger here and we can call it trigger let's 
The roll here is set to 180, and that is totally fine. We could set it to zero, but it won't make too much difference here because it's only going to be moving in that Y direction. Now let's hit Shift D and make another bone. This one is going to be for the magazine, so let's call it magazine. And rotate this 90 degrees in the negative direction, such that it's pointing downwards. And the reason that we're doing it this way is so that when we're in pose mode, I'll hit Control Tab and go over to pose mode. You can see that it rotates here from the top, so that it's easy to guide this into place as we're you know, shoving it back in during the animation. Alt-G and Alt-R just to put that back in place. Uh, if this was the other way around, like this, it'd be a lot harder to try to get it exactly in the right spot with the rotation at the bottom. Alt-G, Alt-R, put that back, and I'll keep it straight up and down, just like the handle over there. So this one, the roll, I'm going to set back to zero. So you can see the X is pointing to the right and Y is pointing down. Now let's make another bone here for the uh, ejection slider. So let's hit Shift D on this trigger, move that over. And one thing to note that should happen automatically for you, but if it doesn't, just be careful. I have the 3D cursor here right at the center, but if for some reason it moved, um, we want all of these bones to be directly along this Y axis or zero along the X axis. So you can see at the head and tail of all of these bones, is zero on that x-axis. And so we want to make sure that it's directly in the center of the gun and not uh, off to the side. So this one, let's call it magazine eject. And here I'm going to set the roll to 180 to keep things consistent because so far all of the different rolls have the x pointing to the left if we're facing this way. Uh, so I just want to make sure that things are about as consistent as possible. And then with this, I'm going to parent all of these to the main root bone, control P, making sure that the root is selected last and hit keep offset so that they don't jump and attach to the bone. And now if we go to pose mode, we can grab just this and move all of the others around. So this is working quite well. Then we could go ahead and parent the gun to the armature here, but when we do that, it's going to create all of our vertex groups for us that are going to be uh, how we control which parts of the gun are applied to which bones. So we may as well just make all of the bones first and then parent the gun to it, and then go ahead and assign things uh, all at the end. So while we can't see any of the parts moving right off the bat, that will be very, very easy to do later right at the end once all of the bones have been created. So that's all of the basics, and in the next video, let's go ahead and make all of the rest of these bones.